Coming up on Blueprint for Green, the search for an irrigation system that makes environmental sense. Then diseased and dying trees find new life. And they say Rome wasn't built in a day. Well, it might have been if the Romans had known about this stuff. We'll have all the sustainable details next on Blueprint for Green. Green is brought to you by Cambria Natural Port Surfaces, Welcome Home, Chubb Personal Insurance, s and Geothermal, your Econar expert, Upanor, and Vast Pavers, changing the world one block at a time. Hello everyone, I'm Randy Meyer. Welcome to Blueprint for Green, the show that tries to bring a little green into your life. We've got tips and everything from how you can be more eco-savvy in a new build, a remodel at home and work. We begin today at our still under construction green and healthy home where those triple pane windows are finally going in much to the relief of our homeowners. Now it's time to start making some decisions about what to do with the yard. It's been a big day for Scott Goodwin of Choicewood. The windows he's been waiting for have arrived. Hey, they're beautiful windows. I think they're well made. Um, I think they're going to be super tight and it's going to look fabulous. So I'm liking them. There are more than 130 windows on this house and the homeowners Brad and Kristen were careful to choose windows that were not only as efficient as possible but also made close to home. And we found H windows and they're a local company. We love that fact. And uh, they have this wonderful low E glass. We're going to do triple glaze so that you really conserve the energy. And it's just such a, it's so important in such a, uh, a large home like this. And we really wanted to, um, we really wanted to make sure that the windows were not a drain at all. The H window company is located only about 200 miles from Brad and Kristen's house in Ashland, Wisconsin. The company is known for their custom aluminum and wood windows designed not only to keep moisture out of the home, but to be extremely energy efficient. With the energy costs the way they're going up and up and up, uh, you want to, if you pay to cool your house, you don't want that to escape. Each of Brad and Kristen's windows are carefully made and inspected at the plant. Uh, there are very few windows on this project that are actually square. And that not square thing is kind of a theme in this house, which may make installing some of these windows a little bit interesting. You can't tell from here, but this roof slopes both from west to east, so it's sloping to my left. It also slopes fore and aft from front back. With the triple panes of glass, aluminum and wood frames, the windows are built to last, but they're not light. So that's why so much care is taken during the installation process. Each frame is carefully measured and remeasured. Then the windows are gently put into place. And just to double check the whole thing is level, out comes the laser to make sure everything is perfect. We knew what we were getting. It was well detailed. All the dimensions were given to us. These openings were all dialed in by CAD and they came, we built to exact and tight specifications. So when we actually go to put in a window, they're dropping right in place, and it, it's, good. it's been a dream. And now Brad and Kristen are getting their first glimpse of how those windows will look in their home. They really the turn out gorgeous. The finish is great. The reflective tint on the windows is really cool. I know, I like that. You can't really see in at all. I'm not so worried now about that bathroom. Right. At all. <laughs> you should go stand up there and let me see. <laughs> Naked. No, not naked, not now on TV, but you know. The slight tint will provide some privacy, at least during the daylight hours. And I do like the different sizes, I mean. Yeah, I did too. I didn't think I would. I kept thinking to myself, what? <laughs> Why did he do different shapes there? It's so odd, but they really look good. Yeah. The man behind the odd shapes is Jack Snow of RKD Architects in Vail, Colorado. Yeah, that's like that for no real good reason. Yeah, it just looks right. Yeah. Yeah, well I really because love the really finish on the outside of these windows. I think it looks great. Yeah. I think it's perfect for the house. The group goes upstairs to take a closer look at the windows. Yeah. And with that copper anodized finish, it reflects the light, so you get yeah. little different, you know, hues. 
Anodizing is a process that actually changes the crystal structure of the aluminum near the surface, making it stronger and chip resistant. They dunk the aluminum in a tank and uh, the finish is actually uh, part of the metal. Electrically charged. Electrically charged, exactly. Mm -hmm. I do love the, the idea of price. not having to ever paint them again mm -hmm. or anything like that. Yeah. They're sustainable and beautiful. And fading, it's never going to fade. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what you see now is what you're going to have in 20 years. Right. Yeah. Around the windows are two layers of something called Tyvek. The synthetic material is made up of tightly woven fibers. The product will further protect the home and the windows from moisture. So what we've done with uh, with the Tyvek is make this a the primary drainage plane for vapor coming out of the house. Because mm. Tyvek allows vapor to pass but stops water from coming in. Vapor is a tiny mar molecule and water is a huge molecule. The material is ribbed to give water a place to go. On a smooth surface you put siding against it and any moisture is just going to kind of get mushed in there and, and it's going to stick and it's going to stay. The idea of this corrugation or this wrinkle is that any moisture that enters here is going to have a clear path to run down. Keeping the moisture out of this home has been a goal since the very start of construction. Mold and mildew have no place in this green and healthy world Brad and Kristen are trying to create. There's one place Brad and Kristen do want water and that's on their yard. They plan on collecting rainwater in a cistern and using it to water grass and plants. But they need to find an irrigation system that can make this happen. This is the original lot. This is where the old house was. Brad is meeting with representatives from Toro to hear about their system. It actually does work through a system of weather stations that are scattered about throughout the country. It can be isolated down to within a, a, a city block of where you live. So it just rained you know, two hours ago, it won't automatically go on just because we programmed it to run at 7 o'clock every morning. Correct. That's important because it's been reported that Americans overwater by 20 to 40 percent. Not only does this kill plants, but it's a huge waste of water. We look at irrigation as like a tool on your tool bench. Yep. Is that you don't use it every day and more is not necessarily better. Yeah. And so having the equipment there when it's needed and understanding right. when it's best to be used is really where you see the benefits of automatic right. irrigation. The buzzword in the industry is evapotranspiration, or ET for short. ET is the amount of water that evaporates through the soil plus the amount of moisture that transpires through the leaves of the plant. John says the Toro system is run by a series of smart controllers that take ET into account to cut down on waste and runoff. First, a professional irrigator measures soil type, slope, sun, shade, and enters that information into a central computer. That info, along with the data from many weather stations from throughout the hemisphere, is what the high-tech controllers use to decide whether or not to water. The goal is to use the minimum amount of water necessary to keep the yard and plant life green and healthy. This is our underground garage, which will have grass on top of it. And so um, we may have a different soil construct here. Now. Brad and Kristen are looking at a different type of irrigation system for the grass that will cover their underground garage and for what will become their green roof. These will actually be some solar arrays here. Underneath much of this area will have uh, some form of vegetation. Good morning. About six months earlier, Brad and Kristen met with Toro engineers from Japan. That country has a lot of green roofs, and the couple turned to them for advice on irrigation issues. Through an interpreter, they explained the project. Why did you uh, try to uh, roof garden to make a roof garden? Well, um, we're doing everything we can uh, to build a greenhouse, meaning environmentally friendly. And um, as part of that, we're using a lot of materials and um, uh, kind of building methods that aren't typical, particularly in the U.S. As they look at the plans... This area up here will be a green roof. The engineer identifies some simple ways to irrigate on the roof via a drip system. Uh, he thinks uh, this area of the top roof garden is not so difficult. A drip system is efficient because it slowly releases water through a tube only to the areas that need it. 
The tube can be placed on the soil or buried just beneath the plants. It doesn't require a lot of water to make it work yeah. because it's such a low volume, low pressure application. Right. The goal is to come up with a way to water Brad and Kristen's lawn and plants without wasting a drop. People want green grass, people want beautiful flowers. Um, understanding how we can get there without abusing water is, is the key. Well, the type of plants that Brad and Kristen choose for their rooftop garden could also cut down on the amount of water they use. We're going to follow that decision-making process in the coming weeks. Coming up, old trees get new life in some very surprising ways. Wood from the hood, when Blueprint for Green returns.